if you doesn't know the basic if you doesn't know the background of the certain things you will not predict the economic factors properly whatever we are importing so everything was so fine quality and the craftsmen they had a great standards whatever agriculture crops we were getting they used to get the tax from that agriculture they took over the land so all this was the situation that they did everybody i'm your divya ma'am lecturing vidyashram pre university college mysuru the temple of excellence a warm welcome to you all for the session 1 on your indian economy that is chapter 1 indian economy on the eve of independence session 1 so in the previous class we have completely discussed about statistics the different uh, statistical measures how to calculate correlation how to calculate regression how to calculate the index number and we have also discussed mean median and mode and the calculation part of all the statistics in detailly we have discussed what is collection of data what is presentation of data how to organize the data and why in economics to study a part of statistics is very essential all these topics we have discussed in the statistics that your indian economy or economic your first puc economics is divided into first that is statistics for economics and the indian economy so when comes to indian economy it is important for you all to understand the background of our indian economy so how we got independence so post independence what are the economic structural reforms that we got how and major problems of our indian economy so why we go why we need independence why every year we celebrate so happily that we are independent so all these things that we have to discuss and during that period during the economy before independence what were what was our situation so all these things that we'll study in this chapter that is called as indian economy on the eve of independence and in your session 1 we will be discussing on the topics of low level of economic development under the colonial rule and we'll be discussing about the agriculture sector and the other topics that we are discussing today is industrial sector so what was the situation during colonial rule so how we got independence so before independence what was our situation so all these things that we'll discuss in today's class moving forward first let us understand the background the history so today we are independent india but what is the history we have a very bad history that is there so what is this colonial rule so british came to our india for trading the spices so then they know the resources they took advantage and they started ruling india so that rule is called as what colonial rule so when british took over our india and they started ruling the country and the rule is called as what colonial rule so you all have understood so during the colonial rule what are the situation of our indian economy so they didn't let us grow there was no infrastructure structure facilities they restricted the trade they we are very strong in handicrafts so, so we have lot of handicrafts industries we are strong in agriculture so what they did they started taking over all our cultivated crops to their country as a raw materials so they started exporting our raw materials our country resources the raw materials and as a raw materials for their industry to england so this is what the situation they did they started looting our country so during that what was our situation how the economic structure we are today in the it revolution we are having lot of advantages we are having lot of reforms that is we are globalized today we are thinking local and acting global so how is it possible it's all because of the struggle that the leaders are are india 
Indian leaders, our national leaders have taken up in order to boost the economy. So before that, let us understand what was the history was all about. The, the primary objective of this chapter, so if you study this chapter, you will be able to understand about our Indian economic development. How was our economy developed and what was the situation during the colonial rule? So pre independence and post independence what is the situation how we have drastically changed our economy what are the struggles in our agriculture sector in our uh, industrial sector we have suffered all the things will be discussed in this chapter so this chapter's primary objective is to familiarize you with the basic features of our Indian economy. So what was our basic features? How, or, how was our Indian economy and its development? So it is equally important to know something about the country economic past as you learn about this present state and future prospect. So ma'am you say ma'am we are in the post independence we have got independence ma'am why do we have to know about the past. So past is always it's gone and we cannot come back. So you can say that right but it is equally important to cater to understand the customer to know what was the situation in our India, in our Indian economy, how was the structure of our economy to, to know all those things. It is equally important to know the economic countries, economic past, what has happened to understand the future prospects. So if you doesn't know the basic, if you doesn't know the background of the certain things you will not predict the economic factors properly. So in order to understand and solve our economic problems such as poverty, unemployment, the infrastructure problems, education problems. So we have various economics problem. To solve that various economic problems it is equally important for all of us to understand the past. How was our economy? So what made us to slow down the growth in our economy. Why we have a low level of economic development. So why we are in still economic, why we are in still in developing countries. So to know all the reasons behind, it is very important for you all to understand what was the situation that we had during the colonial rule. Moving forward, so let us first look at the state of Indian economy prior to the country independence. So prior to the country, in the prior means uh, before independence. So let us understand, let us look at how was our country. So form an idea. So it gives an idea about how we have shaped our independence after our, how we have shaped our economy after the independence. So if you understand the country's pre-independence situation period will know what are the strategies they have formulated post-independence for the development of our economy. The sole purpose of the British colonial rule in India was to reduce the country to being a raw material supplier to the Great Britain own rapidly expanding modern industrial base. So why? So they just came to our India to trade the spices. Then what they did? They had a rule over our Indians. What was the main reason to make our country's resources as a raw materials for their industry? That was the main reason, main objective behind the colonial rule. So they wanted our raw materials. They wanted our country's resources to be used as a raw materials for the Great Britain. That is today we have that is Europe. So uh, to the Great Britain they wanted to expand their industries. They wanted to grow. So they took an advantage as a raw materials. Our resources everything they were exporting from India as a raw materials to their industries in Europe. So that was the main objective behind the colonial rule. Moving forward, an understanding of the exploitative nature of this relationship is essential for an assessment of the kind and the level of de development which the Indian economy has been attained over the last six and a half decades. 
India was suffered by British. So they had lot of humiliation, lot of exploitation. So in every field, so we were all our country people, most of them, we were living in our villages. So we had only rural areas at that time. We doesn't have any urban areas since we were in a village state. So th the country were in rich resources, but our people doesn't know how to utilize them properly. So these people exploited us. Moving forward, low level of economic development under the colonial rule. So what is the reasons that we mainly we have during the colonial rule, the development was very low, very less low level of economic development. Why? What is the main reason? So we are rich in agriculture. Of course, we are rich in agriculture and um, agriculture is a backbone of our country. So most of the people depend on agriculture. So if five is a uh, earlier we had a there was no nuclear family system that was there in India. It was joint family Hindu joint family system was there. What is this joint family wherein all the people in a family they live together. So they had a cultivated land so they used to cultivate the crops and whatever earnings they used to get they used to live on the earnings. So few of them were the landlords, few of them were the laborers wherein one person used to earn the other all the persons in the family used to depend on the person who earned so that is why there was a no education there was the uh, literacy rate was very less there was no dependence there was no scope for a girl child in a family so there was a sati system wherein the uh, women were treated as a a person, a husband is there, uh, uh, women used to get respect. Later on, they started treating women in a very bad and humiliative way. So, wherein women used to only settle at their home. So, now we have different uh, scenario that we are seeing in today's world. But that was not the situation when it, it was in the colonial rule. So, women were only restricted for the household chores. So, it is important you all to understand the situation what we had in our agriculture. Why we had a low level of economic development? It is because of the all these factors which I am talking about. Agriculture was the main source of livelihood for the most of the people. Yes, even today. So, the country economy was characterized by various kind of manufacturing activities. So, manufacturing activity also were recognized. We were good at, our Indians were good at handcraft materials, handcraft industries was there. So, we were very good at making things in hand. So, that was um, exported and we used to get money from that. India was particularly well known for its handicraft industries as I have told you all in the field of cotton, especially the khadi clothes that we used to uh, manufacture, silk textiles, metal and precious stone work. So, we were very Indians as a industry. So, they were only manufacturing these kind of products. So, one is one was cotton, silk textile, metal, precious stone work. So, one more questions will be asked. So, what is our, our Indian industries were strong at and what are the products that they were manufacturing? So, if they ask you the question, you'll have to tell it is cotton, silk textile, metal and precious stone work. These products enjoyed a worldwide market, worldwide access, worldwide market was, so we were in highly preferred for this kind of product. So, reputation of the fine quality of materials used and high standard of craftsmanship seen in all imports from India. So, from whatever we are importing, so everything was for fine quality and the craftsmen, they had a great standards, they had a high standards. So, that was the situation. Agriculture, we used to depend on agriculture when it comes to industry, this is the situation. These are the products that we were manufacturing and how we were importing. We had all across a good market were there. We were having a high quality product. At the same time, we had a high standards of craftsmanship. So, this is the situation that we had in our agriculture and in industry. So, during the colonial rule, what happened? Let's discuss. 
the economic policies pursued by the colonial government economic policies means the rule what they made the policies the regulation what they set up british set up so in india were concerned more with the protection and the promotion of economic interest of their home country so whatever rules and regulation they formulated they developed it was benefiting their home country that is england that is their british country so that to towards the favor of the british country they formulated so they start exporting the raw materials from our india so whatever agriculture crops we were getting they used to get the tax from that agriculture they took over the land so all this was the situation that they did so such policies brought about a fundamental change in the structure of indian economy so this policy has brought a drastic change in our indian economy so transforming the country into supplier of raw materials and consumer of finished goods from india from the britain so what they did suppliers we started supplying raw materials and whatever the finished goods they manufactured at their british country we started consuming it so that is how the policies that they formulated during the colonial rule so obviously the colonial government never made an sincere attempt to estimate the national or the per capita income so what is per capita income income of an individual so this they might ask you what is per capita income per capita income means income of an individual what is national income the total income of all the goods and services that is produced in a country so in your upcoming sessions i will be discussing about gdp N nnp and what is per capita income all these things will be studied so as of now they never thought of estimating what is our countries so when there is no industry set up there is no employment opportunity so agriculture people they depend on rainfall so rainfall is seasonal when they have a seasonal rainfall they used to get the good yield so later they become the laborers become unemployed so uh, the dependence over the entire family they used to depend on one laborer so they become poor so that that is how poverty came into our india during the colonial rule moving forward 85% of the country's population lived mostly on their agriculture for their livelihood for food clothing and shelter agriculture was the main source of finance main source of income for all the village people for all of our indians however despite being the occupation of such a large population we had a huge population the agriculture sector continued to experience stagnation so there was stagnation so why there was no growth in agriculture sector why the profit of uh, what they grow the crops were not reaching the hands because of the revenue settlement system that colonial rule introduced what is this revenue settlement system so during that period zamindaris rayatwaris and mahalwaris so that were the system they introduced wherein zamindars landlord they used to collect the in, they used to collect the rent from the laborers for cultivating the crops so if they doesn't give the certain percentage of fixed fixed rent and the crops to the zamindars they used to exploit the laborers they used to take away uh, they used to take away the positions of the laborers they used to take away the land from the farmers so this was the zamindari system they introduced and the zamindars the landlord used to pay rent used to pay tax to the british so this is how the system continued that's why agriculture there was no growth and we suffered stagnation so agricultural productivity became low though in absolute terms sector experienced some growth due to the expansion of aggregate area cultivation so they have started the cultivation though uh, we can see certain development in agriculture se uh, sector but it remains stagnation because of the zamindari system so 
this stagnation in the agriculture sector was caused mainly because of the various revenue system, the land settlement that were introduced by the colonial government. As I have told you, what they did, they started a revenue settlement system, a land settlement system, particularly under the zamindari system. They introduced zamindari system, which was implemented in then Bengal. Presidency comprising parts of India, present day East, Eastern states, the profit occurring out of the agriculture sector went to zamindars instead of cultivators. Instead of cultivators, as I have told you, all the cultivated profit were reached to zamindars, not the cultivators. So they remained poorer. They used to take, just take few of the money from the cultivation. So whatever they used to cultivate, everything it used to reach the zamindars as a rent. So what they used to exploit the laborers and zamindars used to pay taxes to the a British. So, this is how Zamanda system happened. So, that is why we are still having that poverty in our India. So, however, a considerable, a considerable number of Zamindas and not just colonial government did nothing to improve the agricultural system in our India. So, Zamindas, they used to get the rent. The British used to get the raw materials from our India. We cultivate and send them the raw materials and we import the finished goods from their country. So how how is how was the situation? We need just we have to just imagine about that. So neither the Zamandars nor the government, the British government, nor the people were interested about to improve the condition of our government and to our agriculture sector. Next. The other reasons that is there for our country is low level of technology. The other reasons is because of we are remaining still a stagnation during the pre-independence was low levels of technology. There was no upgraded technology. There was no irrigation facilities. They used to depend on the rainfall. Rainfall was seasonal for the farmers. So lack of irrigation facilities, negligible use of fertilizers. So there was no proper pesticides. So pest used to entirely spoil the entire crops. So added the plight of the farmers remain the same. So there was a low level of agriculture productivity and these are the different other reasons why the pre-independent situation were, were, where there was no growth in agriculture sector. There was of course some evidence of relatively higher yield of cash crops in certain areas of country due to commercialization of agriculture. Moving forward, so hardly our farmers, they were not getting the proper crops as industries were not set, they didn't had a employment opportunity. So despite of all this progress in our agriculture sector, they remain stagnation. So that was the situation of our agriculture in our India. Moving forward, let us understand industrial sector. So in the previous slides only I have discussed, so we were strong at hard handicraft industry. So we were handmade product were famous and we had a worldwide uh, market for handmade uh, crafts wherein we had a high standards, high quality were maintained in manufacturing of such things. What happened during the colonial rule? So in manufacturing, India could not develop sound industrial base under the colonial rule even as countries world famous handicraft industries decline. So we, we had a world famous, we were in world famous industry, we declined. Why? Why? Because our government that, that was colonial government did not support the industries. They didn't give the opportunity for industries to grow. So they started exploiting the employees over here. They started uh, the Indians, they started exploiting Indians. So what they did, there was no growth in industries as well. The primary motive of colonial government behind this policy of systematically de-industrializing India was twofold. They want to close all the industries. They want to 
destroy all our industry, de-industrialize India. Why? Because we Indians have to depend on them for importing of goods and finished goods. We need to depend on them. So for this purpose, they started taking the advantages of all our good things. Moving forward, the intention was first to reduce India to status of mere exporter of raw materials for the upcoming modern industries in Britain. In modern, the what was the clear intention? To make India as a raw materials and to export those raw materials for the industries that were set in Britain. Second, to turn India into a sprawling market that doesn't want it to... Um, expand the market they wanted to take over the market so british wanted to take over indian market for the finished products of those industries so their con continued expansion could ensure the maximum advantage to their home country britain so that first first thing was to make sure that our all our raw materials can be exported second thing is deindustrializing our industries and to make sure that all the market all the access can go to their industries at their home country britain so that was their intention so there was certain decline of the indigenous handicraft industries created not only massive unemployment in india so it created what massive unemployment in india but also new demand in indian consumer market which was now deprived of supply of local made goods so local made goods, they had a lot of demand, supply was less to create an uh, imbalance in the supply and demand and to create a massive unemployment so that we hold the feats of British. This demand was profitably met by increasing imports. This demand was profitably met by this uh, whatever, whatever consumable uh, demand what we had. So that demand was met by increasing high income for their country so imports cheap manufactured goods from britain so this demand was profitable met profitably met by the increasing imports of cheap manufactured goods from britain so modern industry began to take root in india but its progress remained very slow initially this development was confined to the setting up of cotton and jute textile so it was started to grow later so they started industries of cotton and jute textile mill so later what happened the cotton textile mill mainly dominated by Indians were located in the western part of the country namely Maharashtra and Gujarat while the jute miles dominated by the foreigners were mainly concentrated in Bengal. Subsequently the iron and the steel industries began coming up in the beginning of the 20th century the Tata iron and steel company so this is very important question so it was the first industry that was set up so that was uh, Tata Iron and Steel Company was incorporated in 1907. So this was the company. A few other industries in the field of sugar, cement, paper, etc. came up after the Second World War. So this is after the colonial rule we are talking about. After the Second World War we are talking about. So few industries started coming up. So that was cotton industry, jute industry, sugar industries and the the iron and steel industry however there was a hardly any capital goods industries to help to promote further industrialization in india so when it comes to manufacturing of goods we have capital intensive goods and the labor intensive goods so labor intensive goods means a person in hand used to uh, manufacture the goods that is labor intensive go uh, goods manufacturing Lay, using laborers, capital using machines, they used to manufacture goods. So there was no capital intensive group, there was no technology and machines. Capital goods industry means industries which can produce machine tools. Capital intensive goods and the industries which itself they will uh, manufacture the machine so that that machines can be utilized for the other manufacturing purpose. In turn used for producing article for the current consumption industrial sector 
the growth rate of new industrial sector after the second world war contributed to the gross domestic product it remains very small what is gdp gross domestic product so what is this gross domestic product it is nothing but the income earned in india during the earn during the year the the goods the income that they earn from the goods and services that they have earned for a particular year that is called as uh, gross domestic product so the income what they have earned during a year from the goods and services within a year is called as gross domestic product so another significant drawback of new industrial sector was very limited operations with the public sector this sector remained confined only to the railway power generation communication ports and some other departmental undertaking so there was only private sector there was only public sector undertaking and the public sector dominated by the railways even today railways taken for power consumption is all they have taken by the public sector undertaking so there was no scope for the private industries to set up in our india so that's it my dear students in the next class we'll discuss about the foreign trade and we'll discuss about the other sectoral development that we can see during the colonial period and after the colonial period and what was the structural reform that our government took in order to develop our economy so hope the session was very interesting and fruitful smile is the biggest jewel you can wear people keep smiling thank you